Hello everybody, Ben Woodruff here with another falconry video. Today's video is going to be a fun one. I'm going to be talking about the Merlin subspecies. Before we do though, before I jump into that, uh, if you can hit subscribe, helps me keep this channel up and going. And be sure to let me know your comments and experiences and questions down below. Uh, but the subject of Merlins, I've done other videos on Merlins. Merlins are one of the most fun you will have with any species of raptor that you could fly. As long as you uh, are religious about your weight management, Use good telemetry, and my personal opinion, you should keep them inside, not only for uh, perfect uh, regulation of the weight management, but also so that you can um, keep them very social and not afraid of you and feel uh, you know much safer around you and as well as in the field. Merlins are bird hunters. Now, they're not much larger than an American kestrel. You know, and so if you look at American kestrel, you might think, oh, well, what's the difference? Uh, kestrel's even more colorful. Maybe I want to fly that. Kestrels are mammal hunters and insect hunters that sometimes hunt birds and in falconry can be trained to hunt birds. Merlins are the opposite. Merlins are bird hunters that will hunt flying insects and if they have to, will go after a rodent, but it's extremely rare. Merlins have incredibly long toes to catch birds out of the air. They are the perfect size, the perfect um, balance between um, big and small to have less drag and less pull from the gravitational pull of the earth, but to still have enough musculature to just be like a bird with a rocket jet pack. Uh, but flying up, flying down, flying level flight, their athleticism and their speed is just, its it, it'll take your breath away. And they are a joy to fly, a joy to train in every way. So cannot recommend merlins enough. Um, they're a circumpolar species, which means if you look at the earth and you turn the earth this way, this being the North Pole, and then you go whoop, they are, and you draw a circle, that's where they live. The northern part of the northern hemisphere, covering many different countries, but in some regions they happen to drop down further, like in my area, Utah, we happen to have a lot of merlins in the fall, winter, and spring, which uh, you, when you go you know, horizontally across the globe, a lot of other states do not have them come down that far that are our neighboring states. So it's like, uh, another place that they drop down quite far is Egypt. It's kind of funny. I have a friend in Egypt who's flying a merlin last year, and I think that's pretty amazing to think uh, that a bird normally associated with the tundra would be down in Egypt and would be trapped and flown, and it's like, that's really neat. Uh, so it's a bird that covers many different countries, many different cultures, and has a rich history in all of them. But in my area, we have all three of the subspecies, but subspecies are a problem. There are kind of guidelines. We have three that we normally call. We have uh, the Richardsons, the Columbaris, and the Suclei, which in that order are, according to the books, biggest, medium, small, and lightest, medium, darkest. Okay, that sounds really simple, doesn't it? And when you break out the field guides and you open them up, you see, oh, okay, in addition to that, you'll see pictures where, oh, the, the females uh, retains browns, but the males, as an adult, get, uh, you know, blue on them. But when you look at these field guides and you look at these uh, descriptions, they don't really do justice to really kind of understanding them. So you can get very technical and say, like, let's take a look. Here's some museum specimens uh, that uh, of wings. And again, the Richardson's wing, okay, pretty cut and dry, very light. Uh, the barring of the band's much thinner. Then you look at the columbaris, which kind of in between, it's definitely darker. And then here are two examples with the suclei, one dark and one very dark. And both of these wings you can see, okay, there's more melanin, more pigmentation. It's a much darker bird. Again, that seems very direct. And I know both biologists and Merlin expert falconers who have told me before their formula where, okay, if you look at a primary feather, if it has this many light bands, it's this subspecies. Or if it's only this many, it's this one. Here's the tricky thing that a lot of people don't do not know about. Merlin Merlins will often nest near each other, you know, pairs of merlins, and the pairs will interbreed with each other, and every egg is fertilized separately. I have a friend who in Wyoming is witnessing two nests where he knew where both nests were, and the male from this nest would, would copulate with uh, its mate and also go and bring food and do that to this mate, and then a third male from who knows where was doing the same thing. So you had interbreeding of uh, subspecies going on nest to nest, so the same nest would have eggs hatched that had inter-subspecies hybridization. And what genetic traits get passed on might have some odd consequences. For example, let's take a look at, uh, in my area, 
we would call this a suclei, which is the smallest and the darkest. But even though it's dark, when we take a look at the tail, that tail has some very bright bands on it. Kind of strange because people from the Pacific Northwest, which is kind of the homeland, heartland of the Suclei Merlins, would say, no, 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 the tail needs to be completely dark like this to be considered a Suclei. What you have there is the intermediate, the columbaris. Well, the fact of the matter is it kind of makes these things up where in some areas you have subspecies intercrossing. But here are the basics, okay? And again, remember, starting off uh, that... In theory, all of them, the males, their first year don't have blue wings and get some level of blue wing as an adult. The darker the bird, the less apparent that is. So let's start with the Richardsons where it's the most obvious. Female Richardsons, both uh, the adults and the juveniles, the first year birds, have the very light colors. They're very large, again, enormous feet, wonderful birds, and I love to hunt pigeons with my Richardsons. They're and the odd thing about this, though, is that the smallest Merlin I have ever trapped by a long shot was I accidentally trapped a male, which, by the way, male Merlin, if I haven't said already, is called a Jack. I accidentally trapped a Jack Richardson's, and it was tiny. It was like kestrel size. I'm like, how can you be? Back then, I did not know that you had the inter-subspecies hybridization. So that makes sense. It may be a small individual, or it may have some of the size genetics from a different subspecies coming in. But either way, the female is the female, but the male, the jack, starts off looking quite like the female. And then once it gets its adult plumage, its second year, you have that beautiful powder baby blue that a lot of people love so much. Now, uh, some people might compare that to a kestrel. American kestrels, remember, American kestrels, the males have the blue their first year. They don't get it as an adult. But with Merlins, that's not the case. With Merlins, there's blue that they get as an adult. Now, the next one in line would be the Columbaris. And again, this is the hardest one to define, depending on who you talk to, because how dark do you have to be to be a Suclei? Depends on who you talk to. But the Columbaris is darker than a Richardson's, smaller than Richardson's, and bigger and lighter than the Suclei. These are a lot of fun. I don't have any preference for or against them. I've flown several of them, but usually I fly Richardsons or Suclei's. And then the, the smallest and the darkest are the beautiful Pacific Northwestern Suclei's, which again can be ridiculously black. Now, even though these are small, I've never had a problem taking large prey. I've never had a female Merlin that I have not been able to go after barn pigeons with and uh, feedlot pigeons. So they, even the smallest subspecies of Merlin, a female is definitely capable of tackling doves and pigeons with no problem if it's done correctly. All of these birds occur in my region in Utah in the fall, winter, and early spring. Sometimes they list other subspecies uh, and there's always question of different types, but those are the three that are normally recognized. So just remember, Richardson's is supposed to be lightest and biggest, uh, Columbaris is supposed to be uh, medium in color and medium in size, and the Suclei is supposed to be the darkest, the blackest, and the smallest. But then again, if anybody's telling you, blah, 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 here are the rules, just remember you have inter subspecies hybridization that can result in different manifestation of genetic traits in unexpected ways. Uh, if you want to fly Merlin, I highly recommend it. They are easy to train and they are so much fun. And really, it does not matter with Merlins which subspecies you get. When I talk about peregrines or some of these other birds, I'll have very distinct. Uh, uh, opinions on which subspecies is going to fly better and be more conducive to a good hunting companion. Not with Merlins. If you get a good Merlin and you train it right, you're going to have success. You're going to have a lot of fun. It doesn't really matter. So uh, my personal preference for the uh, female Richardsons and female Suclei is nothing more than I'm an artist. I'm a painter. And there's certain attributes of their coloration and melanin uh, uh, distribution that I just find really beautiful. And so it's just a lot of fun. But I hope you enjoyed learning just briefly about the different subspecies of North America. There are other subspecies as well around the world, which I can spotlight if you like. But I wanted to start off first with what I know in my area. And I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And as always, happy hawking. <laughs>